Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the next edition of Cocktails. This time we're doing it for the Curious About online festival. Uh, and our theme today is innovation. Now, today I'm going to be making some cocktails which are innovative or creative. And I have a man here to help me uh, who is neither. So can I introduce Gavin Mitchell? Here we are. Hilarious. Now, <laughs> you probably know Gavin uh, as a, as a, uh, from TV and acting and panto, but he was also, you were a barman in a, sh a small show, I believe? Yeah, yeah, in a small wee bar. Yes, yeah, <laughs> closed purely for the pandemic, however. Oh, absolutely. Yes, not for no reason. Well, good, so Gavin's here to help us make some cocktails. Have you ever made cocktails before in a professional? Some in professional? And the clients would know. No. no. Uh, the only cocktail we have is flat lager. <laughs> okay, <laughs> And. Would you say in, out with the clansmen that you're, that you're an aficionado of cocktails or do you even drink cocktails? Uh, I'll drink anything, Richard. Right, okay. Well, that's, <laughs> that's good to know because we've got some quite unusual cocktails today. And they're going along the theme of innovation. So first one we're going to do is basically getting creative what you've got lying about the house. Now I don't mean vim and toilet duck. But you will drink anything. Um, so this this one is a, a store cupboard raspberry jam fizz. Now I presume you are a, a West End lovey now. Oh my darling! Yeah. Much so. so instead of cheap co-op raspberry jam, we're using fancy apricot jam. Mm. That's so it there. Yeah, exactly. So what we're going to do. Um, is get making some cocktails, but before we go, what's your what's your standard drink? What's your what would you normally have, have in a in a pub? Heavy or? Yeah, uh, not that heavy. Well, wine or beer generally. Wine and beer. Uh, well, not together. <laughs> There's a cocktail. <laughs> There's a heavy brew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm a heavy drinker. Well, uh, uh, so yeah, you nice. said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cider. Cider. Uh, Good. Cider and the best cocktail you've ever had. My favourite cocktail is actually from a cosmopolitan. Mm. Uh, because I was introduced to it in, in New York uh, and I didn't know what it was. And, and you know, the, the first time I was there, it was kind of, uh, you know, cocktails weren't that more expensive than a normal drink. And somebody said, oh, try this. It was, that's delicious and really refreshing and uh, light. And a, a the off the stool, you couldn't walk. A kind of morning cocktail then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a wee heart starter. <laughs> Good. And would you say that's the most memorable one you've had, the most memorable cocktail? Yeah, for lots of reasons. I think because it was in the States and, uh, and all that. Although it was really funny how that was taken over by things like Sex and the City and oh. being as a, a women's drink and like that. And of course, the ball things are fantastic things. Yeah, so, great. Okay, yeah, well, favorite. let's get on with the first cocktail. So the first, co first cocktail is a, a jam store cupboard fizz. We're using uh, apricot, but you can use any jam you've got lying about. So, for a man that's never made cocktails before, this is what it goes in. And this is the lid, right? So, 50 mils of gin, okay? Into the metal one. One. Two. That's your gin. How are you getting on? Okay, so far, yeah? And, 20 mils of store cupboard lemon juice in case you don't have any lemons. And then what gives the fizz its fizz is egg white. So 25 mils of egg white popped in. Now, if you don't like egg, you don't eat eggs, you may be vegan, you may be vegetarian. This chickpea water, believe it or not, is an alternative to use for egg whites. So same amount of chickpea water as you'd use for egg whites, mix it in and it will do the job. Um, I prefer the egg white, but um, that's just me. Right, so ice, here we go. <laughs> lots of ice, lots of ice. Okay, get your glass ready. Short glass, come on. I'm still just enjoying putting ice in. You got your jam in yet? Oh no. Bob Marley. Jam in, that's how these cocktails are made. Uh, okay, big spoon. Big spoon. Do people shout that at you in the street? <laughs> oh, big spoon. <laughs> right, 
That's ready. I just one. Maybe another one. Though you are sweet enough. Stop it, you. <laughs> you like. Right, great. Lid on. Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh, oh, put that in there. Right. Oh, here we go. Stand back, everybody. Uh huh. Lid on. Give a wee gentle. That's it, and. Good, 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 That, with the top of a little more ice. Give that a good shake. You did more than me, not that time. <laughs> You're just not very good at it. How dare you? <laughs> yep, just top up with ice. Now you've given you a grater because this is too technical. Okay? And that goes in there. And that, here you go, is the first of our cocktails. I think you've done pretty well. <laughs> oh. Now, if you put yours there, we'll see how they both stand up. Okay, just <laughs> hold on. I just like a wee bit of gum. <laughs> there we are. The perfect store cupboard fizz. Next cocktail, um, it's a gin and tonic but it's got a slight, uh, a slight sort of innovative part to it. So standard gin and tonic, right? But what we are using is this blue pea infused gin. So it's standard, we're using a, a Glasgow gin, actually. We're using Glasgow gin with the, the man in the cone on his head. Um, Duke but of Wellington, no way. That's the fella, yep, that's the fella. So it is gin infused with blue pea powder. Pea powder is um, a flour which you dry out and then obviously powder up and it stays in this colour until it's hit by a, a, an acid. So in this case it will be the tonic or the lemon juice and it changes colour when the, the acid, is, in, is, the, the acid is, in, is introduced into the gin. So we'll get making them. But while, before we start, um, a few more questions. Mm -hmm. um, you may be known best, certainly best in Glasgow for for Bobby. I mean, there's no no argument on that. Um, but how did you how did you first feel about the part when you heard about it? Well, um, yeah, it was funny because originally I was Winston. Uh -huh, and right, okay. came, uh, And we uh, well, originally I was one of the old men. Uh, it was Greg and I were the old men in sketches, and then I became Winston in a sketch. Ford wrote a sketch for a series we did called Vel uh, Velvet Cabaret. Yeah. Not Velvet Cabaret, sorry. Um, no pulp Video, it was called. Um, and so from that, I couldn't continue to be Winston. I was doing a kids show at the time. So Paul Riley came in and became Winston. And then they asked me to come in and be Bobby. But that was also another actor played Bobby originally, uh, Billy McElhaney. Uh, so I came in, and then at the time they said that the template would be a bit like The Simpsons, so you would get to know these characters. So you that <laughs> <laughs> You get to know these characters, and eventually they would hold their own episodes and things in there. Aye, and, uh, and so. Good. And did you did you think it was going to be as big? No, I don't think any of us did. I think if you knew what made it successful, we'd bottle it, you know, or <laughs> we'd have. Uh, all went off and done our own things. I don't think anybody expected it. But it was a slow burden, you know, it was it was only till about the third series it started taking off really and then it just and also it was timing I think of things like DVDs coming out and uh, people sending it to other parts of the world, to expats in Australia and America and Canada and things like that. And it, it kinda just slowly, slowly built up really, you know. And how did you find the the run? 
the fifty one. Oh, that was extraordinary over the. the, the he must have hated that all those fifty pound notes. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was certainly. Uh, it was um, old Bombay doors opening on the first night. That's for sure, because it was me that uh, was the first one to speak and open at the hydro. So I was totally alone in front of the right, audience. Okay. So I was like, whoa. Um, yes, it was a small evacuation involved there. <laughs> um, but no, it was amazing because we were meant to do four nights originally. And Paul and I were walking over the tunnel across the road there after we did the press conference. And I was saying, four nights, do you reckon we can do four nights? You know, Beyonce couldn't do four nights. Um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I think we can do it. And we were going for a pint. Uh, and I said, how do He said, I think we can do more. And I said, how many do you think we can do? And he said, I reckon we can do 10. I thought, 10? That's insane. Because my agent at the time got in touch with me uh, when it was first muted. And she said, you know, I don't know, you know, uh, if you, it's a big old space. And I said, no, I reckon we can do a night. You know, she's no longer my agent, by the way. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, I said, I reckon we can do a night. And then cut to, that was the Wednesday we announced it. Tickets officially went on sale on the Friday. Uh, and by then there was a computer meltdown. A journalist phoned me on the Saturday and it was up to, six, it was up to 12 by that point. And while he was talking to me, he went, oh, no, hold on. You've went up to 60. And then we eventually it finished on 21. The first 21. Time. 21 shows. But, but we've played all in all now, uh, the three times we've done it, it's 51 times we've played the Hydro. <laughs> so I think we, we hold the record. So, so yeah. Take that, share. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I, mean, I, I had tickets. I was going to go, but... You heard it was rubbish. Couldn't be bothered, oh, really, at the end of the day. I was know? the same. There was nights I never turned uh, up. Was, I'd seen EastEnders once that week, but I thought, oh, I'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> well, and how did you feel about, you know, people knowing you as, as Bobby? I mean, it must be a, a double-edged sword kind of thing, because 51 shows across there, you must be having a, a relatively nice time of it. But how did you feel about it? And people still shout, oh, Bobby, and, and non-stop. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. I've had it all over the world, though. It's, it's bizarre because now it's on Netflix and, uh, uh, and things like that, and people all over the world get it. So the, the, there's been fans from Brazil, Malaysia, all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's the one thing about lockdown that I've quite enjoyed uh, was that I could actually walk about without somebody shouting to paint you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Bobby. You know, and, and, and that was really nice. First time in nearly 20 years. Because every single day I get called that. Um, <laughs> Or you're out, you know, and you're chatting to somebody about whatever, and you hear two pounds, sure. <laughs> and that must mean that the mask is quite a wee bonus just now. Aye. Aye, although I'm surprised, certainly locally, I've had my mask on and a hat and during winter, scarf, all the rest of that. I still walk in and people go, all right, Bobby. Oh, Jesus. It's the way you walk. So ne never ever will I get tell. away with a bank robbery, folks. <laughs> it's the eyebrows, I think. <laughs> and but, that unusual aroma. Right, OK. So <laughs> let's get... Some gin and tonics made. So we are using our blue gin. Voila. So a nice fresh, make sure you use a fresh one of these because otherwise it'll ruin it because the last one had lemon juice in it, or mine did. So two of these guys, mm -hmm. 50 mil. One, two. There you go. This so, feels dead sciencey because it's all. Oh, blue. Is that a real deal? It's like, ooh. Right, now, so, lots. Yeah, so that's two measures of paraffin. <laughs> lots of ice. Lots and lots of ice. Find the bag. Lots and lots of ice. Right, to about that, I would say. Yep, that's perfect. Now, this is the mad scientist bit. Here's the science part. Yep, okay, so you've got your tonic, your bottle opener. Oh, bottle opener, bottle opener. <laughs> it should be in your wee... Let me maybe, maybe try that glass. Can't find it, nurse. Um, I'm sure I saw one there. Ah, I have one. It. There you go, perfect. Then everybody stand down. It's uh -huh. fine. Can, Can you use it though? Bottle. There's a guy down here. <laughs> Aye, could you? Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Aye. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> Stop. Do you need tonic? Yes, come on now. It's easy. You're a grown man. Oh, I'm an old man. Oh. There you go. Oh. Right. So pop it out here so everybody can see. Not the first time I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and gently pour your tonic over the top, right? 
So it's slightly changing colour. Now, if you get a bit of orange of, of lemon, you should see it. That's changed colour. Yours is better than mine on this occasion. There you go. So that was blue. Now it's a pink colour. How amazing! Woo! There you go. That eh? is your colour changing pea powder gin and tonic. Mm, mm, mm. The best gin and tonic I've ever tasted. Oh, hello. Mm, mm. Oh, that's alive now. <laughs> mm. And what cocktails do you think Bobby would drink if he was a cocktail drinker? I think uh, Bobby's cocktail would probably be a lag of tops. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be a lag of lemonade in it. That would be a cocktail but in the clansman, I think. It'd It'd be too like, fancy. What? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if Bobby's ever had a cocktail in his life. I so think it's perhaps the, one of the ladies that he never managed. Well, we like, did at one point. When was it? It was the 80s. There was a flashback and Bobby was making cocktails. He had a Frankie Says t shirt on <laughs> and a wee tash and, and stuff and an earring and things with his sleeves rolled up. Um, I don't know what the cocktail was, but he had made cocktail. I think that was the last and only time was the 80s on the Quantum ah, that uh, Bobby made a cocktail. And but, do, do barmen, you're in boozers, which you're in quite a lot, I imagine. Um, do you get Bobby Banter off the guys behind the bar, or, or are they a bit in the know? Are they a bit too cool for that? Um, it depends. It's normally punters. You do get barmen, but it's the same. The same things. You either get the two pincher, uh -huh. uh, or the other one is. <laughs> Should you know being the other side Whoa. of the bar? Oh! Hey. Yeah. And then that? people wonder why I don't laugh. <laughs> uh, but it's funny, for 20 years people say those kind of things to you and they, they honestly are surprised. Uh, you can see people kind of falter in a wee bit and they think, I wish I hadn't said that. Do you think, yeah, do you honestly think nobody's ever said that to me before? <laughs> Must people, be hard. Must yeah. be hard. Good. Well, that's that cocktail um, and we'll move on to the next one. Cocktail um, is an innovative and creative, we might say. It is a martini, but not your standard martini. This is actually a courgette martini. Ah, interesting. Shake it, so matched up. It is a uh, healthy and fun. Hey, uh, well, what more do you want in life? Exactly, much uh, like myself, you know. So, right, what we do, this is the, this is the, what makes it a courgette martini. Well, thank God, I was wondering what that was. Uh, yeah, not, not a specimen. Um, <laughs> it, one courgette in the liquidizer, two big spoons of sugar, and more of the lemon juice. Leave that overnight, and the sugar draws out all the juice out of your courgette. And the next day, in a cloth or in a sieve, Drink it all out, wow. and that is basically a, a courgette. It's called a syrup, it's not really very syrupy, but it's a courgette and sugar syrup. So this is going to be the base for our martini. As you said, all the arguments about shaken, not stirred, this martini is going to be shaken. So oh, that's the difference between the shaken, not stirred. So why is that? Because is it, as far as I can remember, it, the, the, the spraying with ice waters it down. And if you shake it, it bruises the molecules and releases the oils. Something along those lines, I can't remember. I mean, there were all those barmen out there who know exactly what it is, and go, oh, that's completely wrong. But it's something to do with it bruising the, the, the oils that come out, or, and then if you stir it, it dilutes it. So, so, so it, does, it does affect the taste? Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially, especially, I like a, a, a dirty martini, so I drink, and that is lots and lots of ice stirred quickly, so the ice doesn't get a chance to melt, and it cools everything down really, really quickly. And then it's into, these should technically be in the freezer, right. but we don't have a freezer. So, anyway, so this one is going to be shaken. So, again, we'll bang this one. And we're going to put in 25 mils of your courgette water. In you go. 25 mils of a vermouth. On this occasion, we are using the martini. Try it, Drums please. at bus stops by all 17-year-olds when I was a boy. Ah, yes. Happy days. Yes. <laughs> so 25 <laughs> mils is, now this is quite a, quite a perky little number, as it's pretty much all booze. There's not much mixer going on. Rather like being caressed from the nape of one's neck to the bottom of one's spine with a mink glove. 
Wow. God, two sips of cocktails, I'm off my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two hello. Two shots of vodka. Keep up, young man. Two shots of vodka. This is a vodka martini. Wow. For all anybody who's noticed it's not gin going into it. You there? And do we know why, like, a martini, you know, gin or vodka, what the difference is, or where... I'm always curious as well where the names come from, you know, why it's like a martini and... The martinis you drink, you have a vodka martini or a gin martini. And it's purely pre preference taste. When you make a martini, especially a gin martini, you, what you'd actually do is you'd, you'd get your, your vermouth in, swirl it around, shake it out, and then it's basically it's just super chilled gin. So you're almost drinking straight gin with a wee, a wee smidge of your vermouth and then your pickled eggs. <laughs> they go inside it. Right, okay, so you've got all that stuff in. Mm -hmm. Let's get a lot more ice in it again. Nice, nice amount of ice. Oh, God. Oh, I can't get a big look at that. No, yeah, yeah, I don't Technically not the best way to do it. Oh, right? really? Oh, well. Doesn't mess matter. that up. This is what, how not to make uh -huh. a cocktail. That's why I'm here. Oh. On top, again. Right. Slap on the bottom. Hello! <laughs> right, okay. Again. There we are. Strainer. Into your freezing cold glass. Oh, that looks out good. Here we are. Almost professional. Now, this garnish, on this occasion we're using mint, so you've got a bit of rather peely wally looking oh, mint in there, but still, you know what I mean. A wee bit of mint in, pop it in, and there is your courgette martini. Very good, and I'd like to have a taste of this guy as well. Ah, I've been expecting you. Mmm. Chin chin. I think, ah, uh, and a wee olive in there. Mm. Bit of saltiness. Yeah, yeah. Not bad though. Not bad. Yeah, but oh, it's, you'd just, said olive before I tried it, so I was thinking olive, and I was thinking there's no olive in this. But yeah, an olive would just set it mm. off a wee bit. Delicious, mm. that's great. Um, So, while we've done that, I do have a, a couple more questions. How do you think that, you know, the last year it has ch changed for actors? How have, you, how have you found it? I mean, do you know, you and your fellow actors, people badly out of work? Yeah. People suffering and second jobs, all that kind of thing? Yeah, I think it's, it's been rough, you know, our industry generally. I think not just actors, you know, right. everybody uh, behind the scenes or front yeah, house and theatres. Or, it's, I mean, it's a massive, massive industry worth billions and... Yeah, I know so many people who, you know, put their homes at risk, really? families, everything, you know, and, and people, no, no disrespect to, to those jobs, but people fighting over just to be a delivery driver yeah. or, or get a job in Tesco's. And I was lucky that we'd just done the hydro not that long before lockdown, so I was like, God, thank uh -huh. God I had something uh -huh. squirreled away. Um, but yeah, it's been really, really rough. And also I think it just kind of shows that we don't really value the arts very much no, in this country. No. Um, and even though you know, you know, people are talking about things opening up again, and you know, industries like bars, restaurants, whatever. But we seem to have slipped away. You know, you don't really hear it being discussed that much in the news or things. And it's a strange world where I think the the snooker championships are going to be the litmus test of right. how, how big an audience is. They were going to let two thirds of an audience in or something like that. And they were hoping by the the final they would have a full audience. And apparently Andrew Lloyd Webber phoned up, you know, is it Bertie, who is the kind of, I can't remember the, the, the head yeah, yeah. of the, 
snooker federation to hello darling I just we've all got our eyes on you I do Lloyd Webber watching snooker going oh I hope I hope I can bring back Phantom yeah. <laughs> there was a slightly different audience from watching the snooker than it is on a, a Saturday matinee for a, in the King's Theatre for you know dirty dancing <laughs> it's not really quite, quite the same Her thing Hormonal housewives or whatever <laughs> shown at the King's Full to the gunners of Lambrini so you know it's <laughs> What's that, that in your bag, madam? Nothing. Uh-huh. How dare you? Um, but I don't know if that's the right litmus, the right litmus test because everyone's going to sit. Yeah, I mean, and nobody. A boring I, snooker. I'm certainly not in a rush to get, you know, to, as an audience member to sit in a theatre. I think it will be strange. It's going right. to be to sit in a space for for hours together again. It's going to be very very strange. But yeah, it's yeah, it's been depressing. It's been rough. Uh, I've hardly did anything. I mean, I think everybody seems to have started doing podcasts. Mm. Uh, and so a lot, a lot of things like that, and also try to save other people's businesses. You know, people ask me to do a lot of things. I did a wee bit of filming recently, uh, and that was strange. It was lovely. It was mixed feelings. Mm. It was great to be back at work, but obviously to change a lot of tests uh, oh, and, of course, uh, right. and now COVID officers and things like that. But the thing I was doing, uh, it was in the centre of town. It was a chase sequence. I was being chased. And we actually had to get a lot of support and artists for me to run round <laughs> because the city centre was so quiet. So there's just people sitting outside pretending to have coffee and me running round them and things I like that. I take it you didn't run very far. No, no, no not my age. Quite a short scene then, yeah. Very short scene. <laughs> and uh, aye, there was a defibrillator involved at the end. <laughs> and also, <laughs> with all this time off, have you, have you learned any new skills? You know, some folk have taken up knitting and. Um, and sewing and uh, not new skill. I kind of uh, went back to old things. My kind of first love of painting and things. Okay. Like that. So I started painting again, which was really nice. Uh, but like everybody else, you know, it's like, what are you having for your tea tonight? What book are you reading? What film are you watching? And that's the, all you can kind of catch up on with people. My saviour has been, uh, I've got a wee, rescu- wee Spanish rescue dog. Is um, that Bob? Bob. Yes. Bob the dog. Uh, yeah, Bob's amazing. Uh, and so he's kind of got me out and about and rediscovering Glasgow, which has been nice, just rediscovering parts of the city mm-hmm. and architecture and areas and just, yeah, long, long walks. Uh, that's been nice. That painting, reading, you know. Keeps you busy. Keeps you, but you know, keep, you keep your out. hand in. That's you know, it. You've, got you to keep, you've got to keep active up there, that's up it, there for I thinking, doing it for dancing. As you feel like. Righty-ho. So this next one is a uh, Bloody Mary. No, you're now, talking. The creative side or the innovative side is this. This is a Bloody Mary, but it's flavoured with wild garlic. This is what we made earlier on. So it might need a quick, gentle sugar a boot, but it's fine. So basically it is tomato juice with wild garlic, four per maybe 200 mils garlic leaves, blitzed up and then mixed. And this is your base for your Bloody Mary. So. I get the wild garlic, this has come from the River Cart from Sean's. There's blankets of it and you can use all sorts of good things. You can make pesto, you can make soup, you can make poultices, it was used as an <laughs> anesthetic. I don't know why I'm looking at you and I'm saying you can use a poultice. It's an anesthetic so you can put it in your, your boils. Quick, your... get those over to the hydro right now. There's people getting wee jabs over there. So this is your base unit. What we're going to do is we're going to make it in here though as we did before, just to get all the ingredients together. Cool. So, I would say, for a nice glass of that, maybe about half of this stuff in. It's quite thick. In fact, you can pour the whole lot in, and we'll just pour as much as you need. So that is your wild garlic infused. Oh, what the hell. Chuck it all in. Hey, you're on your holidays. Oh, there you go. Scud it into me, I'm bonkers. Vodka. 50 mils technically, but... I've got a mouth full and a half. Right. <laughs> no more, no more for you. So 50 mils <laughs> of this guy. Um, and that is your base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some ice in this just to cool it down to begin with. You don't have to, I mean it's a pretty straightforward. But I'm sure we've all made Bloody Mary's. So that goes in there. And you get your, your long neck spoon. Keep up. Get a nice big mix. Cool it all down. That's really all we're doing. Cooling it all down. 
Okay. And I'm going to strain this again with, with the strainer into the glass. What? Keep up. There we go. Maybe some more ice just for good luck. Bloody Mary. Now, I, what do you like in your Bloody Marys? Um, gosh, I like a, a bit of everything. I like them fairly spicy. Right, well, we've got... So, do you know the thing I've never understood? That, you know, it's such an individual thing, a Bloody Mary. And they're hard to eat. And some people use bitters and things, don't they? Mm. But um, I've always, I've never understood the celery thing. Bloody Mary's. No, it's. I think it's an excuse to you're having lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really drinking at 11 in the morning. No. There's food involved. So, uh, <laughs> Scottish, this is a Scottish hot sauce called <laughs> Oof. Oofed. Because Oofed. that's the noise you make when Oofed. you have it. So, how's your drink? <laughs> Oofed. So a wee bit of that goes into this one, I think. Just a wee bit, because it is particularly hot. Particularly tasty, though. I like lemon in mine. I don't know if you're a fan of lemon. Oh yeah. Lemon. Um, and uh, how do you pronounce this? Uh, <laughs> Liam Perrins. Ah, <laughs> that's just a rat's way of saying Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Yes, enjoy And what I brought for your garnish, because celery wasn't really optional, is a little, this is a garlic, Hello. garlic flower head. A wee bit of the suicide in That's your drink. It, yep. There they are now, a wee yep. bit of the river cart. Oh, hello. <laughs> eh? What else could you need? So I like that for the wee taste. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, just a ticket. Mm -hmm. Again, oddly enough, these all appear to be morning cocktails. Yes. <laughs> They're like, certainly a brunch cocktail, that one. Yeah, just one of those and a, a wee bowl of honey nut loops. <laughs> and you're set for the day. Not much science involved in that one, but um, still, it's, it's, it's a nice call to what, what do you, what's your knowledge of science and engineering? Because you're I, in this illustrious seat of learning. Not a lot, do you know, I remember my, one year for Christmas, I found in the wardrobe before I was meant to, uh, from Santa, was uh, a chemistry set, uh -huh. uh, and which was fabulous, it was really exciting. But I, my, my abiding memory, a typical man that didn't follow instructions a lot of the time, it was just in about things and, oh, a Bunsen burner fire and, <gasps> and all that. And the, the main thing that I basically did was just kept dropping iron filings on the Bunsen burner and going, woo! Nice, <laughs> nice. Until I, uh, I set fire to the kitchen table uh, and I ran in the living room. My mum was asleep and she never ever knew. I was like, oh, my, oh God. And the whole table had went up. But I managed to blow it out. Thankfully, I just kind of panicked at first. It looked worse than it actually was. But it was just a whole kind of line of iron filings, like a bomb going off. And it was just like, <laughs> But yeah, so that, that's that. And, and then if you're of a certain age, uh, you probably remember section six in science. I don't know, I mean, would be a fan of science at school? Um, did you go to school? Did I, no, no, <laughs> no, I was raised in a jungle by wolves. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, no, you know, um, yeah, I, I, and it was weird. I, I never uh, progressed with science. I, I went more into the arts, obviously. So, so I only did it up to a certain point. Uh, did you used to like the gas taps? <laughs> well, it was things like. It's also through science I discovered I had no sense of smell. None at all? None at all. Very handy. Um, well, yes and no. Oh. I have almost blown up the house and stuff like that before. Um, but yeah, and it was an experiment. I don't know what the chemicals were, but the teacher said, you know, you mix these chemicals. Uh, tell me what the reaction is. And she left the class and people were sort of mixing these things up and I'm standing around and somebody went, oof, and held this test tube back. And I'm like, oh my God. And then people were going, what, what? Oof, and the whole class started doing this and I'm going, <laughs> with a test tube and they, and they put them all together in a beaker and went, you can't smell that? And gave me the beaker and I was standing with the whole thing going <laughs> and the teacher screamed and ran in and went, no, stop, don't do that. And I'm like, well, I can't smell it, man. 
And so for years... Was that the first time you found out? That was the first time, because it's, it's amazing, actually, you don't think about it. If you've not got one, it's mm. not like not having your sight, so you don't really notice. It was only things at school that somebody would kind of have a small explosion between the legs. And, uh, a trouser cough? Mm, a little trouser cough. <laughs> and, uh, and you just made sure you were one of the first people to go, ooh! Well, so you knew, you knew that you couldn't smell it? But no, I didn't. I just, I thought that's all it was. So as soon as somebody went, ooh, I would go, ooh, like everybody else. But I couldn't actually smell anything. But I didn't know. I never made the connection. Or people would lift up a flower or something and go, smell that. And I'd go, oh, nice. That's but, the, but I wasn't, but I didn't know. I just thought, well, a flower's nice, so that's, yeah, that's nice, you know. And at that point you decided that it was the board, walking the boards was the way you were going. When did you think you were going to be an actor? When did you start? Did you fall into it? I f it was a, a dare, really. Um, I think I always liked, since I was a kid, watched telly and played games and uh, did impersonations and it uh, would be quite bossy. No, no, I'm going to play such and such and you do that and right, pretend we do this and stuff. But my first love was art. I wanted to go to art school. And then I was unemployed, didn't know what I was going to do in my life. I'd worked with bands and various things. And my best mate at the time got a job at the Sips uh, as a carpenter. Mm. Um, and one night we were at a party and we'd had a wee drink on the Silk Intelligence. <laughs> and, and he said he'd been asked to be an extra. And, and I was like, oh God, I'd love to do that. And my mate Ian had no aspirations to be on stage and was a wee bit of a mumbler and grumpy and was like, I don't, I don't really want to go on stage and stuff. I went, well, I'd, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he, he kind of knew me at the sense from uh, backstage and, and going to see shows and things. So he put my name forward. As an extra? As an extra. And, uh, and I kind of, in those days, I can't, there was a certain look to people at the set. So in those days, I was skinny, had hair, and it was black, and I was peely wally, which was the kind of sets look in a way. Um, so yeah, that was the start of it. I didn't train, uh, which I was quite sort of paranoid about mm. uh, for, for a few years. But then realised there was no better training really, so I learned on the job. I was at six for about four or five years. And in those days you needed an equity card, so I, I built up to get my card. Uh, and then of course once I got my card all the rules changed and you didn't need an equity card anymore. Um, so yeah, that was it really. And stumbled up, stumbled around ever since. And through through all this, through all your whole career, who, who do you think has inspired you most? As an actor yeah. or, or generally? Yeah. No, and, and just in, 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 as an actor, I think. As an actor? Gosh, I don't know. My, my dad was a film projectionist originally. And so I was kind of brought up with movies quite a lot. So I like old stars. Like I've always loved Peter O'Toole, mm -hmm. actually, as a hero of mine. And I have one of his scarves at home. Which is really cool. Is that pillow? Aye. <laughs> oh, Peter. Uh, they won't be coming for the money. Long story, but but um, so yeah, uh, old sort of stuff. It's so many people, you know. I like uh, so many different actors for different reasons. Uh, but lots of people inspire me, not just actors. You know, um, like Jim Haynes, who we sadly lost uh, during the pandemic, who set up the Traverse Theatre yeah. originally and lots of magazines and arts labs. He started arts labs and knew John Lennon and David Bowie mm -hmm. and people like that. And he always inspired me and it was a great loss losing him this year. And he kind of took Casablanca, which oh, yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. done on and off for years playing uh, Humphrey Bogart's part. He took it over to Paris and things. And, the, and one of the main inspirations, and, and I think during this time as well, that I took from Jim was his classic quote. There's a great movie about Jim called Meeting Jim and his final quote in it, is, it says, if, if, if you ever do anything kind for somebody, if you ever do anything for somebody, immediately forget it. But as soon as somebody does something good for you, or kind for you, always remember. And I thought, yeah, that's a good oh, rule of yeah, thumb. Very good. But, uh, aye. To well, Jim. Yes, to, to Jim. Jim, to Jim exactly, to Jim. So, that's our cocktails. Um, we've got some quite last quick fire questions, oh. but which out of these did you like the best? Um, I mean, I'm fully expecting you to drink them all. And the yeah, result, yeah, come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, it's so hard. They're so di different. Well, that's, you know, that's what I thought. Because I love a Bloody Mary, but that is so different. And it's, it's uh, lighter. Mm. It's not as uh, thick as a normal Bloody Mary, but I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I love this one here, the courgette as well. Um, but I would personally, I'd like a little bit of saltiness in yep. there. Uh, 
gin and tonic with a, with a twist. And a cut. I think actually the first one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just because it was so unusual and different. And easy on you. And the texture, everything, it was just something. Get yourself a, a cocktail shaker and you can be having them any day of the week with that old jam. <laughs> what, what have I got in the cup? There's jam. Ah! <laughs> What's your favourite biscuit? Blue riband, or blue ribbon, some people call it, but yeah. How long can you hold your breath? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, there's that great thing you've ever filmed with kids holding their breath going under the Clyde Tunnel. Have you seen that? That's brilliant. Yeah, I don't know, I'm pretty good at holding my breath actually. Oh, I, sometimes out of boredom I'll just lie under the water in the bath. <laughs> Lockdown's doing that to people. I mean, I'm not wasting my time during no, the lockdown. No, no, no. <laughs> What's the least amount of clothes you've worn while cooking? <laughs> I've been naked Like cooking. fried an egg in the buff? Oh yeah, I have done that. Not wise. I have had splashbacks. Right, like, favourite David Bowie <laughs> album? Oh, there you go, Oh eh? God. Ah. Oh that's impossible. Oh God, it changes all the time. Today? What's Today, your favorite uh, Scary album? Monsters and Super Creeps. Right, okay. But it changes, got low! It's probably a perennial. Oh, I'll hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, worst fashion felony you've ever worn? Oh, I dressed, I, in the 80s I had kind of these jodhpurs with, <laughs> with kind of boot, furry boots and a kind of flying jacket out and, and I had a belt full of leather pouches on I looked as if I should be flying a Saltworth camel and I lived in Glen Boy just outside Coat Bridge. What was I thinking? And I dyed blonde hair as well. Don't know who I thought it was. Oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when's the last time you swam in the sea? I can't swim. You can't swim or smell? I can't swim or smell or drive. Or drive? There must be a terrible What's the accident. point in life? <laughs> Have you been risk assessed ever? <laughs> <laughs> so I lose quite a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nike or Adidas? Oh, Adidas. Ooh. I think, I don't, I'm, I'm not a really very sporty person, I, I don't really sell no. myself here. Um, I just say to do this because it, it starts with an eight. Right. Do you own a Swiss Army knife? No. Oh, goodness. Um, do you let Bob sleep under the covers with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you count to ten in a foreign language? Uh, oh, I'll try. Eins, eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. Uh, I went into craftwork mode there for a second. Craftwork to numbers. When was the last time you fell in the street? You know that big ready that you fall in front of people? Probably I, I, I wouldn't remember the unidentified drinking incident. <laughs> uh, I, don't, when was I don't know, actually. Can't remember. Uh, I don't know. I kind of tend to get paid to do things. <laughs> um, yeah. Favourite sandwich? Oh gosh, favourite sandwich. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I don't know. Probably just an egg mayonnaise. That's fine. Um, can you fight? No. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fight. What'd you get in the chippy? Oh, a dark fish supper. Fish supper, yeah. Okay, favourite film? Oh, oh. It's impossible as well. Prob uh, Vim Vendor's Wings of Desire. <laughs> or uh, watching a lot of German silent cinema at the moment, folks. So I can highly recommend it. Very worthy. Um, <laughs> most overrated thing? Oh gosh. Like Object? A, or like general? a Kardashian. A Kard yeah, that's a really good example. Um, Doesn't have to be people think they uh, Most overrated thing? Football. Hey, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> have you ever been barred out of a pub? Which one have you had? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can't really tell the story. I actually got barred out of the place I was working in. That was uh, unusual. I was, <laughs> I was working in the Tron Theatre and they took my drink off me. And it was an opening night and the woman grabbed my drink and I went, oh, oh whoa! And, and there were still lots of people drinking. I thought, why have you taken mine? Uh, and I went up and sort of complained and, went, and I swore. And when I swore, the, the barman came on and went, right! Don't talk to the staff like that and all that, but that was ridiculous and stuff, right, you're barred. I went, well, this is going to be interesting because I'm work here and I've got to walk through your bar tomorrow. <laughs> so that was controversial. Oh, did it last? Uh, no, they cancelled the show and everything. <laughs> <the show>. no. <laughs> Favourite 
No, I think you've answered this in our own lager or heavy. It depends. I'm more a heavy drinker, but it's, lager's your kind of light summary drink. But I drank, uh, I, moved, I used to drink lager, moved to heavy because I thought it was a healthy option. It was more natural. <laughs> okay, okay. And who's, who's the most famous person you've met? Oh, gosh. Uh, God, lots of people. I suppose the one that people always talk about is Robin Williams. Uh, was a good pal. Uh, so Robin. Um, but yeah, I've got lots of people. I think I'd take Robin Williams, to be honest. Yeah, Robin was. And the man. last question, very apt for this little session. What is the best hangover cure? Oft. Or your hangover oh, cure? For, um, I, well, it used to be my go-to was Heinz tomato soup. Right. Iron brew and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, yeah, pretty good. Well, thank you very much for coming and spending your time here. Um, uh, we have a lot to hope you enjoy the cocktails. I did indeed. It was good fun, and um, hopefully, you can now get home and get your cocktail shaker out and uh, oh. make some new stuff <laughs> and annoy me with questions about the stuff we've done today. Absolutely. Middle of the night, you'll be getting calls about garnishes. Lovely. And <laughs> thank you, everybody else, for viewing. And I hope you've enjoyed the festival and hope you've taken some cocktails you can use in the future. And we'll see you again the next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Cheers.